Hi, this is Press of Atlantic City Sports Editor Mark Melhorn, and I'm here with our Eagles beat writer David Weinberg to talk about the end of an era in uh, professional football in Philadelphia as uh, the Eagles today fired coach Andy Reid after 14 years as uh, as the team's coach. Um, I was shocked today. I, I saw a, a stat that said that he is the longest tenured uh, coach of a Philadelphia professional team since Connie Mack of the Philadelphia A's back in the uh, the early 1900s. I mean, uh, you know, the A's aren't even in Philadelphia anymore. So uh, this is a pretty monumental achievement, I think, you know, not only just for Eagles history, but um, Philadelphia sports history in general, Dave. And uh, obviously you've covered him for a long time and, uh, you know, the good and the bad. But uh, first of all, just let's talk a little bit about this season and and Obviously, going in, it was there was an ultimatum given by uh, owner Jeffrey Lurie at the beginning of the season, and uh, things just never seemed to quite catch any momentum for the Eagles this year. Yeah, I mean they did have some uh, very high expectations in training camp, but uh, and they they had a little bit of a setback when they found out that Jason Peters was going to be able to to play. It turned out for the entire season, but uh, to lose your left tackle, who's considered the best offensive lineman in the NFL. Um, that was that turned out to be a pretty significant loss for them, um, and things like you said, things just didn't seem to turn out for them. Uh, they managed to get to start off three and one. They were impressive vic- victories though, and you know when they started the season. But then they lost Jason Kelsey to injury. A couple other guys got hurt, and then the losses started to pile up. And they, I think, they're just sort of pressing a little bit too much, and then. You know, every loss seemed to heighten the frustration a little bit more, and then uh, pretty soon it was just spiraling out of control. Yeah, it was interesting. I think even as recently as the last few weeks, and there has been rampant speculation that this was Reed's last season since they couldn't reach that eight and eight mark a few weeks ago. But you know, I I know you and I have spoken that there there have been some murmurs that maybe Reed might be back because of the fact that this team did have several injuries. Um, but you know, just watching Sunday's game. Uh, it seemed in some ways that he kind of had lost the team a little bit. I don't know. What 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 is your sense from that? Did you get a sense that, that the players had kind of quit on him a little bit? I don't want to say quit on him, but you're right. He, he did seem to um, lose the team as far as a motivational standpoint. I mean, the last I thought, I thought there was actually a, a, like a 50-50 chance that he would be coming back as recently as a few weeks ago, but the last two weeks, Kind of changed my mind a little bit. They had, you know, the perfect situations where, you know, they had they were home for their last game. They wanted to make sure that Reed won his last game at the link and uh, wound up losing to the Washington Redskins with a, a pretty lackluster performance. And then Sunday's game against the Giants was just an uh, outright embarrassment. You know, they and they had talked all week about how you know Reed was their guy and they wanted to end the season on a good note. They owed it to him and. To just uh, turn in a performance like that, that was just uh, there was just like no excuse for that, and that told me that they really didn't care all that much, you know, who the coach was. Uh, that mm-hmm. seemed to be the, the sense I got anyway. Yeah, I, I just you know, obviously some things will probably come out in the next few days, you know, uh, as things inevitably do when there's a coaching change. But um, you know, and and there will be a lot of changes with this team going forward. But you know, I in some ways you could say that Reed um, Reed's peak with this team happened a few years ago. Um, I mean, they did make the NFC Championship uh, a couple years ago against uh, the Cardinals when they lost. But I think even that was a little bit of a surprising run for them. Obviously, that Super Bowl appearance against the Patriots uh, in 2005 was the pinnacle of of his time in Philadelphia. Um, you know, just talk a little bit about. What do you think happened? You know, what has transpired? How the how the whole Reed fourteen year era is combined and or, uh, has transpired, and you know, what were some of the obviously some of the high moments and the low moments? Well, like you said, the, the highlights just you know were there's that one between the two thousand season and two thousand four season when they reached the Super Bowl and they they were they turned from a uh, a disastrous team under Ray Rhodes in nineteen ninety eight and they showed you know minor signs of progress in ninety nine and then. Well, they went on that run where it seemed like all their core players came together at just the right moment. You know, Donovan McNabb turned into a, an all-pro quarterback, Brian Westbrook, and then, you know, Leo Shepard, Sheldon Brown, the secondary, and then Brian they Dawkins. added just, 
Yeah, right. Brian Dawkins, who was a whole other, but really came into his own uh, under Jim Johnson's system. And uh, Jeremiah Trotter, middle linebacker. Uh, then they, you know, added Hugh Douglas. They had Trey Thomas left over. And they combined Jervon Kirst, John Runyon, and, uh, of course, signing Terrell Owens in 2004 was a big uh, big factor for a season anyway. But then, um, well, after that, it just seemed like they never uh, replenished what they had. Guys started getting a little bit older, um, started getting a little disgruntled, and it just seemed like there was no uh, second wave of people to, to pick up the slack other than, you know, a few guys like LaShawn McCoy, uh, Deshaun Jackson, those kind of guys. But the, I think the main thing was they never found a replacement. Well, two things. They never found a replacement for Dawkins. Mm-hmm. And they never found a replacement for Donovan McNabb, mm-hmm. uh, other than Michael Vick with, with the one year in 2010. But that seemed to be just kind of like an aberration almost. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, he's really really fallen from out the last couple of years. So uh, it just seemed like they'd never, um, they never continued rebuilding uh, like they did in the early 2000s, and then everybody got old at once, and uh, they just never recovered. It was just a gradual slide from the 2009 season on down, and they started with, they made the playoffs in 9 and 10, but they were one and done both years, right. and uh, then it just seems to, to steadily get worse from there. All right, well, just talk for a little bit about what are some of the things, I, you know, covering a, you know, a coach for this long, and, 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 and obviously he's has a history of maybe not, the coziest relationships with the media or, um, you know, the jokes are always said about, you know, the repeated phrases that he says during the news conferences and, and the oh. hope that, you know, that reporters constantly wanting to get more, more out of him. But, you know, just talk to him a little bit, you know, in covering him all these years, what are some of the things that you remember the most about him as a person and a coach? Uh, well, you can't argue with his success uh, as a coach. Uh, you know, the facts speak for themselves. The fact that they went to the playoffs nine times in his 14 years, uh, won, I think, six division, uh, six NFC East championships, and uh, went to five NFC championship games, went to the Super Bowl. So uh, his his overall success rate, you can't argue with that. Um, of course, there were also the you know the downsides about his game clock management, you know, uh, and that kind of thing. It was never, as far as a game day coach, I think he left a little bit to be desired. His reluctance to run the ball. <laughs> right, right. Sure, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, that seemed very hard to understand when you had, you know, great running backs like Brian Westbrook and LaShawn McCoy, not to at least make it a 50 50 ratio. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's a West Coast offense guy through and through, and he was just uh, stubborn to the point of uh, being arrogant about it almost, that he just wanted to showed that he was smarter than everybody else and eventually caught up with him. Um, I kind of had a, uh, uh, an uneasy relationship with him myself. I, you know, I, he, he could be very entertaining and charming when he wanted to be, and I was, you know, in several situations away from the field where, you know, he was, he was actually, you know, kind of very funny and, and entertaining, but um, he never let that side show, you know, when, when it was like an official capacity, and that always... Uh, frustrated me a little bit you know i i don't know why he would be so standoffish and so um you know terse with his responses and things like that. i guess that's just the way he was you know brought through with the mike holmgren system maybe he owned that way too i don't know but uh, uh i thought that he could always he always he could have endeared himself to the fans a lot more and it wouldn't have taken that much effort and i, I was always puzzled as to why he didn't do that right you do hit on some things, though, that in your and co- you're going to have a column that's going to run, you know, in uh, the paper on New Year's Day, just about Reed and you know your thoughts on on this on this move. And I I I know you touched on some other things that that you remember from him off the field, away from football. Right. Yeah. I uh, I, I had a friend. Well, I, I knew of a of a teacher friend in uh, Lower Township who. Uh, was retiring after you know thirty some years as the as a teacher down there, and uh, I knew for a fact that she was a uh, an avid avid Eagles fan. Um, hosted parties all the time. She actually wrote poems uh, every time they won uh, for the, the two thousand four season when they made the Super Bowl run. And we, um, I, I just you know almost in casual mention let it be known to the Eagles that you know she was stepping down, and uh, next thing I know she got. Uh, an autographed helmet 
personally signed by Reeve, and not just signed by him, with a with a uh, personal heartfelt message, wishing her good luck and thanking her for her support for all the years. And uh, I know she's also she's always had it in a prominent place on her mail, uh, you know, in a glass box. Nobody's allowed to touch it. And she went every time down to Florida, and that went with her. And it's still uh, ends in every time at home too. And uh, mm-hmm. it's those kind of things that you know. I, that's what I said. he did. That, he did that more often than people realize. There was a lot of uh, visits to hospitals, and you know, people down on their luck. You know, uh, if someone passed away, there was always like a heartfelt message, you know, to to the family and that kind of thing. And um, uh, and I guess I can understand why you wouldn't let that stuff publicize, but. It just seemed like it would have been a lot easier for him if he had just um, uh, just uh, been a little more outgoing, I guess, is the, is the best way to put it. Right. I mean, obviously, you know, there's one thing you could say about him. He was beloved by many of his players, and they obviously mm-hmm. see a side of that, that that side of him that, that a lot of us as fans don't get to see. But um, Absolutely. So, uh, you know, so just wrapping it up here real quick, what what do you think is, is, is Andy Reid's legacy as his time as the Eagles coach? Um, you know, that's really hard to say. I mean, it should be that, you know, he was the most successful coach in Eagles history. Um, his 140 wins were, I don't know, 80 more than everybody else, I think. And the fact that he was able to sustain that for almost a decade, I think, should be the way he should be remembered. However, um, Eagles fans being, you know, how they are, there's probably going to be some, uh, you know, well, he never won the Super Bowl, and... Uh, never took us to the promised land, so you really can't say he was a great coach. Even though, like I said in the column, you know they they think Dick Vermeil walked on water and he got blown out in the Super Bowl, and they think Buddy Ryan was the greatest thing since sliced bread, and he didn't even win a, uh, a playoff game. So, you know, to to put Reed below those guys somehow just rattles my mind. But um, that'll probably be the case, knowing the, the way you know people think. 